Hi everyone, it's Natalie and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my very belated box office-a-thon wrap-up. This read-a-thon was created and hosted by Miss Moody Reader. It happened during June and I should have posted this video earlier, <laughs> but I didn't honestly have the time to film it. So it's happening now. It's hopefully going up at the latest by the end, the very end of July. So it should all work out. It should all be fine. It should be fine. Anyway, so for a very short explanation of this readathon, basically Antonisha has a TBR game and she made that TBR game into a readathon and so it's like based on roles and she has like this board it's a whole thing i will link it up above so that you have a better idea if you're interested and i'm pretty confident she is planning on hosting this readathon again but i don't think she's established a date yet anyway the point is i'm gonna walk you through the roles that were picked out throughout the month and i will tell you what i read for them so the first role of the first week of the readathon was read a medium paced fantasy or sci-fi for that one i read gear breakers by soe hannah mikuta i will link up above my review for it because i already have a review so i'm not really going to talk about it again here but essentially it's about this future where there are mechanical robots that are kind of worshipped as gods and gear breakers are those who are trying to dismantle those robots because honestly the whole religion of the robots is truly messing with the people and is not really helping people people are suffering because of them so it's this whole overthrowing the government kind of thing but it's with a more religious tint i guess and it's very action-packed it's very very fun but it also has very emotional moments because the characters are really going through shit and they're really feeling it and you get to see that so i really enjoyed it i think i gave it four stars because it was just a good time it's a debut novel and it was solid it was solid the second role was historical fiction or classic via ebook so for this one i didn't follow the ebook portion of the prompt because the prompts were flexible, the roles were flexible, and so I just went with the historical fiction element and I read The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. So this is set during the time of slavery and essentially we follow two queer men who are in love but everyone in the plantation around them is either essentially out to get them trying to destroy their relationship and essentially make them as miserable as everyone else already is or is essentially covertly trying to help them to make sure that they're comfortable that they're safe that they're not in more undue harm than their mere existence essentially promotes or encourages i guess so i rated this five stars honestly it was so good that i kind of put me into a reading slump like a little bit like it was hard to pick up a book after this one because it was so emotionally charged which obviously makes sense is set during the time of slavery we're following these two enslaved men you know that it's not going to work out like you're not really expecting a happily ever after <laughs> within this setting and so it kind of fucked me up but i also don't regret it and this is probably a contender for one of my top favorite books of the year because it just it was brilliant honestly the writing was phenomenal it was so 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 beautiful i've seen reviews that are like I don't understand what the author was saying and like that was kind of the point bro <laughs> like it was kind of the point for it to be just a little bit outside of your grasp everything like it still made sense like it's not like the plot didn't make sense or you didn't fully understand the sequence of events but not everything was crystal clear but to me that was part of the fucking point so like whatever and in general what i loved about this was that we saw these two men not only through their own eyes but through the eyes of everyone else as well at the plantation and so you saw basically how beautiful their relationship was even to those who didn't understand their relationship like people 
who were disgusted basically by their relationship still at the same time saw the harmony and the beauty of their relationship and so it was just amazing it was just amazing and i loved that we got very different perspectives and none of them felt like they were being unduly villainized like everyone was a full person you could see the basically the good parts of them and you could see the bad parts of them and so that just that just made this a spectacular read that i would highly highly recommend but just be prepared to be emotionally devastated by it basically the first role for the second week was random tbr pick there were actually quite a few random tbr picks in this readathon and that one i did not read i got the passion according to carmela and i can't remember the name of the author but i didn't read it i didn't get around to it mostly it was because i was getting so slumpish with the profits because it was so good that i just couldn't process things i just didn't get around to it because i felt like it was also kind of gonna be literary and i was like i don't know if i can do two literary books one after the other that sounds like a lot so didn't read it but still hopefully will and i basically picked that one randomly from my spreadsheet where i have all my backlist well not my backlist but all the books that i own that i haven't read yet so i picked a random number and it landed on that one so yeah the second prompt for the second week was a mystery or thriller that is somehow connected to the word indirect like there's something indirect about the plot or the characters or whatever so for this role i read the haunting of hill house by shirley jackson you all know this book probably there's a netflix show it's a horror classic but it essentially follows four people who go to stay at this haunted house and they're trying to figure out if it's really haunted what's going on and so of course they get swept up in the spooky <laughs> shit going on at the house so i rated this four stars again loved it i was honestly not expecting to love this as much as i did but then again one of my friends who i trust read this recently like she read it maybe a month before i did so maybe in may or something or at the very least she finished it in may and <laughs> she was telling me how she really really enjoyed it and she thought that i would enjoy it too and again i trust her she knows my tastes and we kind of share similar tastes when it comes to classics at least so i was like okay that's probably gonna work for me so i picked it up and absolutely fell in love with the writing of this like the writing was so precise like every single word was picked so carefully it was like on point like no word felt wasted no word felt carelessly randomly picked in there for lack of another better word so it was it was honestly a delight to listen to the audiobook of this because of that because it felt like it was gone over and over and over again like the author really poured over her manuscript to be like okay this is exactly how it's meant to be said and so that just made it delightful <laughs> to listen to honestly and in general i love the subtle sapphic vibes like if you have read this and you didn't get the sapphic vibes you read it wrong like i'm telling you right now you read it wrong this is subtle queer lit obviously it's horror though so it's not like it's a happily ever after for these sapphic women but regardless i i loved the subtlety of it how it's hinted at and if you know you know like if you read it if you know you know basically and yeah and it was interesting because our protagonist is kind of annoying but at the same time she's like an annoying puppy so like you love her but you also can't stand her and i just had a good time i i don't know what else to say it was just good so the first role for the third week was a mystery thriller by your favorite author or you could just go by with a book by your favorite author if you don't have a favorite mystery thriller author since i don't read enough mysteries and thrillers to have a favorite i went with a book by maggie stiebotter i read lament i gave this three stars it was 
It was so weak. Like, here's the thing. As a Maggie Steve Otter stan, almost against my will, but it's the truth. I'm a Maggie Steve Otter stan. I don't like her first person narration. It just doesn't work for me. It just doesn't. Like, I started reading Maggie with one of her series that was like first person, but even then I was like, this was not great. This was fun. This was a good time, but like, this is not great. And I started loving Maggie once I started reading The Raven Cycle, and she writes in third person in The Raven Cycle, and it's magnifique. So, Lament, I think that was her debut. Like, I could be wrong, but I think Lament is her debut and it shows like i could see the magginess there <laughs> i could see how this story was very much something she could come up with because the protagonist is a musician she plays the harp there's irish vibes which is definitely something that maggie is invested in and the thing here was that it had insta love and it just did not work it just did not work like i kind of liked the love interest like the main love interest because did i even say what this book is about <laughs> I don't think I said what this book is about. So basically we follow this girl who essentially gets up swept up in the world of the Fae. Like again she's a musician. The Fae are interested in her both because she's a musician and because she has like special abilities and she could replace the fairy queen and so that's how she gets in that mess. And basically, she starts having a thing for a fairy who's not a fairy. Like, he's immortal, but he hasn't been officially turned into a fairy yet. Anyway, she starts developing this thing for this guy. But, like, literally, they've known each other for, like, two days. And I think he says that he loves her. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was completely absurd. But when I looked at the actual plot... I was interested in that and if this had been written in third person I probably would have enjoyed it way more than I actually did but since it was written in first person it was just kind of messy. I just think that Maggie writes like annoying first person like it, it, our protagonist here was definitely like I'm not like other girls and mm, whatever. So do I even have anything else to say? Like, I haven't even been looking at my reviews, honestly, because I read these in June, so I do actually remember more or less how I felt about them, but also because it's like, I had distinct feelings <laughs> while reading these books, so I remember. And yeah, I think that's the main thing I want to say. I'm probably going to read the sequel just because I'm a completionist at heart, so I probably will, and also because it's Maggie, but it wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Honestly, by the end, I wasn't even paying that much attention and I was just trying to get it over with. It was this weird thing where it wasn't unpleasant while I was listening to the audiobook, but at the same time, I didn't want to pick up the audiobook to continue the story and finish it. So that's that. The second role for the third week was random TBR pick once again. I tried very, very hard to pick something that I already owned, but it kept landing on stuff that I had already read on my spreadsheet. So I gave up and just sent a picture to one of my friends and she picked Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. And as you can see, I did not finish it. I, again, I was slumpish because of the, the profits. I was slumpish because of that book. And so I started this and I knew it was good and I was like, this is good, but I just can't get into it. And so I didn't finish it. I got like 40 pages into it and I was like, this is actually good, but I'm just not in the headspace I need to be in to thoroughly enjoy this. So hopefully at some point I will get to it because it keeps being renewed from my library because I keep not finishing it. Maybe one day soon maybe so the third role for the third week and i think i'm doing them correctly i'm not even 100 percent confident i'm putting the roles in the proper weeks but whatever i think it, i am so the third role was a fantasy sci-fi that is a tome so i don't think i met the qualifications of a tome i think it had to be 500 pages plus and mine was like 450 or something so 
whatever but it was it was definitely a fantasy sci-fi so i read gideon the ninth by tamsin muir again i do not know how to pronounce the author's name so in this book we follow gideon who is a cavalier to a necromancer and so the necromancer harrow is trying to become a lictor and this is basically a super powered immortal necromancer but in order to do that she needs to go to the first house which is this planet and join other necromancers who are trying to undergo the same challenges that she is in order to become this superpowered necromancer but as they are completing the challenges people start dying and they're trying to figure out who's committing the murders and what exactly that all means for the challenges they're trying to complete. So that's basically what this is. Like this gets pitched a lot as lesbian necromancers in space, but that's not really what this book is about. Like it's really not. One, the sapphic energy is much more reserved. It's definitely a part of the story, but it's not like a primary central aspect of it. And then second, the space elements don't really matter that much in this first book. Like, okay, they get on a ship to get to the first house because there's nine houses. That's why it's Gideon the ninth because she's from the ninth house. So they just go to that planet on that ship and that's as much space as you get <laughs> in this first book in this series. So it, the promo wasn't quite right, but regardless, I gave this 3.5 stars. The truth of the matter is that I almost gave up on it like 50 pages in. I think I was like 50 pages in and I was like, what the fuck is this? Because genuinely the writing felt like it didn't make any fucking sense like zero sense it like to the point that it would describe a room to me and i couldn't imagine the room because i understood the words individually <laughs> that the author was saying but all together i was like i don't know what the fuck you're saying <laughs> okay lady i don't know what you're trying to describe but i but i cannot see it i cannot understand it and so it was very, very frustrating. I don't like books, especially when they're not literary. Like this is not a literary sci-fi fantasy. It's a fucking sci-fi fantasy mystery. It's, it's not fucking literary. So like when it's not literary, I don't want to be confused when I'm reading. Like it's, it's not my thing. It's not my vibe. It's not what I find enjoyable while reading. Okay. If I'm reading for school or if I go into a novel knowing it's literary fiction, I'm like, okay, I can be confused. I can accept this as part of the process. But this, this book, no, this book, no. Like I understood why it was done that way because part of the whole point is that Gideon doesn't know everything about the world she's in and so she's like trying her best to describe things to us essentially and since she doesn't know that much about the world she can't explain all the intricacies of it but that just leads to a very confusing reading experience that just gets extremely frustrating but just when I was about to just DNF this, give up on it forever, I decided, okay, seriously, seriously, try to read another 50 pages. And if you don't like those 50 pages, you can move on with your life and you can abandon this book. But I pushed on and I started actually enjoying the story. And this was the first book I read during the summer that started me on my journey of enjoying plot <laughs> in books. Like if y'all have been here for a while, y'all know that I read books for characters. I really don't care about plot. It's not really what I'm there to read books for. But Gideon the Ninth started me on the path of being able to ignore either sloppy character work or sloppy world building and just be in it for the ride of the plot and so since i was actually grasping most of the plot i wouldn't say all of it but most of the plot i started really being invested in the story and where things were going to go plus i really was enjoying the dynamic between gideon and harrow like could i pick a favorite no because my favorite thing is the dynamic between the two of them 
the banter between them, the way that Hera is all prickly around Gideon and Gideon's always trying to like push her buttons and stuff like that. I really like that. I thought it was fun. So that was the main things that kept me going with this book because if the plot hadn't gotten interesting like if bitches didn't start dying honestly that was also the main thing if bitches hadn't started dying then this just would have gone downhill for me and i just would have given up on it but since people started dying the characters were interesting even if i didn't think they were fully developed they were interesting so i wanted to know more about them and what they would contribute to the story so because of that I was like, you know what? I'm actually enjoying this. It's a good time. Let's keep going. But am I a ride or die for this book? Like some people are. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. I honestly wish that we had just gotten this book from Harrow's perspective. I know why we didn't because Harrow knows too much. Harrow is too smart. So if this book had been in Harrow's perspective, there wouldn't have been as much mystery basically but it would have eliminated so much of the frustration I had and I could have just been loving the book from beginning to end basically. So since the sequel is mainly about Harrow, it's called Harrow the Ninth, I'm probably gonna read it. Will I finish the trilogy? I think it's a trilogy. Not entirely sure because the third book is some other name of someone I don't know so I'm like I don't know if I give a shit about this person enough to complete this trilogy so for the time being I enjoyed this enough to read the sequel but it was it was rough to get into it like really rough so I guess check it out at your own risk so the first role for the fourth week was yet another random TBR pick. So I went with Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. This is the manga version of the story, the first volume. And in this we follow, if you don't already know, which probably you do, but if you don't know, we follow this college freshman who has a twin and she has always been very close with her twin but her twin decides that she wants to separate their lives a little bit more now that they're starting college and so she feels kind of stranded doesn't know quite what to do she has pretty severe social anxiety and so her transition to college life is not going too smoothly, especially since she writes fan fiction and both her sister and everyone else she meets doesn't really understand the fanfic world and why she's so invested <laughs> in it. So I gave this three stars. It was not a time. It was not a time. Like honestly, I think my favorite bits were the fanfic moments. Like when I could see art of Simon and Baz, I was like, yes, do that. Focus on that. But everything else was kind of a mix. Like one, I both really liked the protagonist that I can't even remember her name anymore because I don't care. In some ways I really liked the protagonist, in other ways I didn't. And one it's because i felt like her social anxiety was very realistic so it did kind of make her annoying but at the same time it made sense because i was like i understand completely your decisions they're they're irrational because they're based on anxiety but i understand them so i couldn't really fault her for that but then there were other moments where she was like very pushy and trying to tell people what to do like it was any of her business and i was like what are you doing just just stop and then there's this whole point in the novel where she gets scandalized like this is a minor spoiler but like she gets scandalized because her professor doesn't like that she turned in fanfic for her creative writing class and i'm like girl how do you use the world the characters and names of a published book in your creative writing class and expect your professor to not be upset about that like i'm like get it together stop just just stop just stop i'm like you can go incognito because i've done that like i have a creative writing minor and i did write fic for some of my assignments but i did it in a, such a concealed way that honestly it's barely even fic like 
it reads as if it were its own thing because it was so <laughs> different from the original content so i'm like girl you needed to go incognito at the very least but she didn't and then she got mad and i'm like you're an idiot so there was that but then i was also upset because her sister and her friends were trashing on fanfic and were so like ooh, mm, mm, whatever about it i'm like the hell's wrong with you people i think it's because i can't relate like most of my friends either read fanfic there's themselves or don't give a shit one way or another so it's like why are these people trashing so hard on it and on her for writing it it I was just frustrated with that and I couldn't I, I couldn't feel like they were her friends for doing that like you know like I'm like how can you be so dismissive of something someone really cares about and still consider yourself their friend like you, you can't not in my eyes at least so that's kind of what happened with this will I continue with the series I actually don't think so no Mm, not interested. The, the second and last role for the fourth week was yet another random TBR pick and this was another one that I did not finish. So I ended up with The Shadowed Sun by N.K. Jemisin and I just couldn't get through it honestly. One, it was close to the end of the month and so it was kind of just like not really gonna happen but I also was struggling with that. I've really been struggling with like long fantasy audiobooks because that's how I have this book. And so I got maybe, maybe at most like 10% into the book. And I was like, I can't do this. I'm not interested right now in this. I'm not interested in the characters or the world. So I'll just go back to this at some point. So yeah, that was everything I read for this readathon. I'm honestly looking forward to when Antonisha does this readathon again because I just thought it was so much fun to have to pick books for all the roles and see if there were going to be any punishment roles again watch the video explaining the readathon for what even what any of that means but yeah that's it for today's video thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you would like to follow me on any of my social media i will have the links to that down below in the description but for now see you next time